Hello, how are y'all doing today? Do you like my Ice Nine Kelsey shirt? Thank you to my awesome sister for getting me this. And don't mind the little schmutz on my lips. I uh, fell this morning. <laughs> uh, so, as you can tell by the title, we got a doozy for you today. So, not only did Joe Biden outright deny the sexual assault allegation that has been leveled against him, he also denied that any archives of any complaints exist, that you had to go to the University of Delaware or I think Senate office or whatever if any complaints do exist. That's where you'd find them. You'd find them in the archives. But he said they not only did this not happen, but they don't exist either. So, today it was reported, and I'm, re I'm reading this, I've already skimmed through it, but I'm going to read it again for you guys. Exclusive 1996 court document confirms Tara Reid told of harassment in Biden's office. So, I'll link this specific article in the description below because this was not the only outlet that reported it. SanLuisObispo.com? Well, a court document from 1996 shows former Senate staffer... Former Senate staffer Tara Reid told her ex-husband she was sexually harassed while working for Joe Biden in 1993. The declaration, exclusively obtained by the Tribune in St. Louis Obispo, California, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, I'm really sorry, does not say Biden committed the harassment, nor does it mention Reid's more recent allegations of sexual assault. Reid's then-husband Theodore Dronin, Dronin <laughs> wrote the court declaration, Dronin at the time was contesting a restraining order against Reed, filed against him days after he filed for divorce, Superior Court Records Show. In it, he writes, Reed told him about a problem she was having at work regarding sexual harassment in U.S. Senator Joe Biden's office. It appears to be the only written record that has surfaced from the time that substantiates Reed shared her account in the years following the alleged incident. Though a former neighbor came forward last week about similar conversations she had with Reed, or she said she had with Reed in 1995. The news came as Reed was preparing for the release of her first on camera interview since the former vice president and presumptive Democratic nominee for president personally denied the allegations May 1st on MSNBC. Former Fox News host Megyn Kelly tweeted about the interview Thursday morning, calling it a riveting exchange. She did not indicate when it would be published. In the filing dated March 25th, 1996, Dronin, Dronin, I'm so sorry, testified that he met Reed in the spring of 1993 while the two worked for separate members of Congress in Washington, D.C. Dronin wrote that Reed told him she eventually struck a deal with the chief of staff of the senator's office and left her position. It was obvious that this event had a traumatic effect on Reed and that she is still sensitive and affected by it today, he wrote. So now I'm going to read you the actual complaint, the actual um, archive or whatever that was recovered. I met Petitioner, that's Tara Reed, that's, you know, I guess their divorce proceedings or whatever. I met Petitioner in the spring of 1993 while working in Washington, D.C. At the early stages of our dating, Petitioner felt comfortable confiding in me as we both worked for members of Congress and we shared many common interests. On several occasions, Petitioner related a problem that she was having at work regarding sexual harassment in U.S. Senator Joe Biden's office. Petitioner told me that she eventually struck a deal with the chief of staff of the senator's office and left her position. I was sympathetic to her needs when she asked me for help and assisted her financially and allowed her to stay at my apartment with my roommate while she looked for work. It was obvious that this event had a very traumatic effect on Petitioner and that she is still sensitive and affected by it today. Only reason I elucidate any of this is because Biden denied not only that this happened, but that any archives or any records of complaints existed. Obviously, it did. So Biden's lying. So if Biden's lying about the existence of a complaint, obviously, he's lying about the sexual assault. Biden sexually assaulted her. He stuck his finger in her, digitally penetrated her with his finger, and pinned her against the wall and kissed her against her will. And when she pushed back and resisted, he wagged his finger in her face and said, you're nothing. You're nothing to me. Joe Biden digitally penetrated her. Joe Biden sexually assaulted her. Joe Biden raped her. And this is who AOC is going to tell you to vote for. This is who Bernie and Tulsi are going to tell you to vote for. The same people that when Ryan Grimm at The Intercept broke the Brett Kavanaugh story, they leaped to the conclusion that Brett Kavanaugh was guilty. Now again, 
Um, on one hand, it was found out that one of Kavanaugh's accusers was, she admitted to lying, to lying. She had said that Kavanaugh raped her, but then came out and said, oh, actually, I, I, I never met him before. I just, I was angry, so I said it to say it. So one of Brett Kavanaugh's accusers admitted to lying. That's separate from uh, Dr. Ford's allegations. Um, that's a separate can of worms I don't want to open right now. But Ryan Grimm at The Intercept originally broke the Kavanaugh story, and the entire Democratic establishment leaped to the conclusion that he was guilty. But now it's one of their own. Not only are they so quick to defend him, so quick to deny this woman and, and uh, accuse her of lying, but they also accused her, specifically Howard Dean did, accused her and accused Ryan Grimm of being Russian assets. Again, as Jimmy Dore has elucidated many times on his show, they're using McCarthyism to, to, and a red scare to slut shame and slander this woman after she was sexually assaulted by the anointed candidate. Sexual assault and rape is okay with these people when, when the person doing it sports the same gang colors as them. It was AOC that said, believe all women. And if you don't believe all women, you're re-traumatizing victims. Well, what the hell do you call this? If you vote for Joe Biden, you are re-traumatizing victims of sexual assault. No matter what happens, you've made women more vulnerable to sexual assault going forward. Because what this does, regardless, even if Joe Biden was innocent, the, the way that they've been so quick to defend him and, and try to... They've been so quick to say this woman's lying, and there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, and they've went back on all their principles about believe all women. J just the fact that they've done that regardless has set up a precedent, as if, that, as if it didn't already exist, where powerful men will be more empowered to sexually assault women because they know now there's an increased probability of them getting away with it. That's the culture that Joe Biden and AOC and Bernie Sanders and the Democratic establishment are perpetuating and creating, and they don't care because they're all climbers and they're all concerned about their own careers. And if it, when it's Trump and Kavanaugh, their hair catches on fire. But when it's uh, the demented, death-rattled rapist that sports the same gang colors as them, they got no problem with it. Hashtag Dem exit. Do not vote for these people. And that's all I have to say.